Hey, how's it going? I'm Dave Lasowski, and this is How to Win with Video. In this episode, I'm joined by Megan Turner and Paige Burns, the owners of Poppy Plum Media and Main Page Media. And they were actually also guests in our first episode, The State of Video in 2021. That conversation was part of the full interview that we did, which is what you're going to be hearing or watching in this episode. To get you up to speed, we talked a lot then about the role of video in building trust between businesses and their clients. One of the standout points for me was when we concluded that video is so accessible nowadays that if you don't have any video of you or your business online, it can make people start to wonder, what are they hiding? I don't know about you, but when I go to a business's website and all I see is stock imagery and no original photos or video, it definitely gets me wondering, well, why can't they show me that? In this episode, you're going to hear us talk about building your confidence on camera, establishing yourself as an expert using signature authority content, how Megan and Paige launched their online video coaching program, the Video Identity Project, and the right and wrong times to be using DIY video. We're going to jump right into it with Megan talking about how she got started creating her own signature authority content series, The T. Here we go. Um, So it was really sparked by something my mentors taught me um, in, in one of the programs that I went through with them, that they had this nugget, right, where they said, okay, as a video professional, you need to be educating your audience, right? And there was this um, real push for us to be, you know, practicing what we preach that, you know, if you're telling people you need to make videos, you need to make those videos. So that's how the T just got started, honestly, because I started making those videos telling my future clients, hopefully what I wanted them to know about video, working with video, what video you need. And I was really shocked by the level of clout that it gave me in the community. Um, (laughs) I I mean, seriously, like I did not expect that at all. I I expected people to basically respond with who asked you, we don't care. We're not spending all the time thinking about video. Like you are Megan, like this is nice, but go, go sit in your corner. And that was not what happened. What happened was that even regardless of the numbers, the metrics, When I would go and at the time um, go to networking events and things like that, and I mentioned the tea, people would be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. I love the tea. Oh, my gosh, it's so much fun. And they knew it. Right. And they knew me from it. So it felt like they had already met me. They already knew a little bit about me. And I think a lot of that came from the decision I made when I made the tea that I didn't want to pretend to be somebody I wasn't, right? If I was going to make a series like this and I was going to give them the tea about doing videos, right? The tea about working with a producer or a videographer, whoever, then I wanted to just tell it like it was and make it so that if they showed up on set with me, they wouldn't be surprised. They'd know what they were in for, right? So it was a little unorthodox. It was a little unprofessional, if you will. And that was intentional. Um, so it really kind of took off from there and I got the opportunity to teach other video producers how to make their own content like this. And then now we're making this content for our clients. Um, and it's continuing to grow and evolve in our understanding of why does this work? Right. Because all video I feel like is, is so experimental, but I think the, the purest form of it is that people do business with people. And so when you get in a relationship with people and they feel that connection, it's a no brainer, right? You're going to buy from your friends before you buy from some big box store. Right. Um, And so I think that's, that's really where it's going. And I'm excited to see where it goes from here because it's definitely not done evolving yet oh yeah i feel like this is just the beginning you know like like Paige, you said how people are now asking for this type of stuff it's we are just finally on the cusp of it becoming becoming a more widespread accepted use of video so that's such that's an exciting thing we are we're still in the wild wild west phase of this you know trying, shooting from the hip, seeing what works. What have you guys found 
uh, Paige, I'll toss it to you. What have you found works like putting out these types of videos and this type of authority content? Yeah, absolutely. I started putting out, I was, I was a little, I was a little behind the curve. Um, if Megan's my curve, um, you know, <laughs> I, I kept saying to Megan, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I finally did it. I started this fall putting out content and I was putting out a video a week of me giving advice to my audience. And I think the, the phenomenal thing about that is just when I talk to people and they say to me, I feel like I already know you because I watch your videos all the time. That is crazy. Like that is a crazy feeling. Cause of course I'm sitting on the other end, like, cool. Who are you? Um, <laughs> what do you know about me? Um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's really powerful to get on a call with someone or chat with someone who says, I feel like I already know you. Um, and it just, it's a way to make that connection on a broad scale to have so many people feel like they already know you so that when they are ready to work with you or connect with you in some way, they're already a warm lead. Like you've taken that cold lead and turned them into a warm lead because they've met you. And I think that's like the greatest impact this can have. What's great too, is that you control what they know about you. You know, it's, they're not, when you're the one that's giving this and putting yourself in front of people and giving them value and doing all that, uh, when they're searching for you, that's what they're going to find. They're not going to find or like have to scour around the internet to find some like weird review from someone from years ago. You know, it's just like, they're going to see all this. So you are the one that's dictating. Here's who I am. Here's what I'm an expert on. And that's the you that they're going to know. And that's huge. And like you said, that's like, that's the thing that you're noticing. That's um, I mean, who wouldn't want that in their business? To well, have when you're the know. one in your industry, putting this information out there, and someone has learned, no matter what your industry is, if it's video, if it's, if you're a dentist, right. You think of when you think of like, Oh, who would know the answer to this thing? You're going to think of that dentist that you watch every week or that you, maybe you don't watch every week. Maybe you're not even that diehard. You've seen three or four sparingly, right? Like you don't have to watch every single one for this to make an impact. And you're going to be like, oh, that's the person who's going to know the answer to this because she makes all these videos on these really like specific things. Like that's the smart person I want to go talk to. So like to make yourself that smart person that people want to go talk to you to get their questions answered. I mean, it's a no brainer. Yeah. And, and this is why we call it authority content, right? Because you're establishing your authority in the industry and the one who has the mic is the one that's the authority, you know? Yeah. So Megan, then. you said that you were so nervous that people were going to think that, you know, who is this chick putting out saying all this about video <laughs> And that was not what you were met with whatsoever. And I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there who are maybe warming up to the idea of doing this type of content, but they, they have that limiting belief too, where they're like, why, why are people going to want to hear it from me? Mm -hmm. How did you overcome that? Like, what was the biggest realization that you had that made you stop worrying about that? I think what really gave me a lot of freedom was the thought that I didn't have to know everything. I just had to know one thing that was helpful for one person, right? So if I said all this crazy stuff, right, and the only thing you take away is one thing that maybe isn't even this novel new idea, but you haven't heard anyone else say it before, then I've benefited you, you know, um, I've I've benefited somebody. And at that point I can feel confident that I don't have to know it all to know something. Right. Um, and There's I certainly so don't claim to know it all, you know? Um, I think a lot of people get this crazy imposter syndrome when they show up on camera. Right. And it immediately gets triggered because you're thinking about how people are going to be per perceiving it on the other side. Right. But I think if we freed ourselves up a little bit more and, and know that clearly not everyone who says something on the internet is an expert in that thing, you know? So who's to say that you don't have something that someone needs to hear right now? And, and if that's true, then are you going to be the person to hold that back from them? You know? I think what's also really cool about you, Megan, and having known Megan behind the scenes, I'm going to, I'm going to like compliment you a little bit here. So sorry if that's uncomfortable. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> But knowing Megan behind the scenes, right? Like when you started creating the tea, I obviously like behind the scenes knew that you were like, I don't know how people are going to take this. What's this going to be like? Right. But how that whole process and experience has 
changed you as a person, like how that has made you more confident, how that has made you a better business owner, a better advocate for your clients. Like it has made you better at your job. And I think that's so cool to see someone like get in front of the camera and have that transform them in that way. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, no, I, Positivity I mean, I everywhere. Feel like, <laughs> I, I definitely feel like it's transformed me. And I think it's what has enabled me to now, you know, with Paige teach other business owners, like it's okay. Like if you're feeling, you know, self-conscious and stuff, it's okay. As counterintuitive as it is, the more you're in front of the camera, the more it will give you confidence, you know? That's what I wanted to lead into next because you've said a lot of good stuff about how you got over it. And now that definitely has to help you when you are teaching this to other people and you guys have a program together that you run to basically do exactly everything that you've just said. So, so plug that and just kind of explain to me as if I know nothing about it, what it is and why you're doing it. Sure. Yeah. So <laughs> our, <laughs> like who Thank wants you. to go? I know, I was Thank just you for like, that softball. Any point, let's flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, about summer of 2020, Paige and I discovered that there was a real need. A lot of business owners were being forced into this arena of having to create video for themselves for the first time. And they were scared. They didn't know what to do. Some went out and invested in gear and they had no idea how to use it. And they knew that because of lockdowns and craziness, you know, they would have to show up more online, but they, they didn't know how that was going to look. And so we developed this program. It's called the Video Identity Project or VIP. Uh, <laughs> Which came first, the, the letters or the name? The letters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced that that's how all good acronyms start. <laughs> yes. It was actually Paige came up with the name, so she gets credit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I, I know that I came up with the letters first, but it might have been like I already had the V and the I. Like, I think I was like halfway there and then I was like, oh my God, we have to make this into VIP. And initially yeah. it was the video identity. What did I have? I think I had like the video identity program. And I was like, program, yeah, week. I think it's week. not as good as project. <laughs> yeah, project's a little more like, oh, we're getting into something cool here. Well, and it really it has become this, this project for people because it's not like they're just coming into a program and learning how to do this stuff. They're doing it for the long haul. You know, we had people take our course in our first cohort when was our first cohort? July of 2020. I think it was July. And they're still coming back for more into our community asking like, this is my plan for 2021. This is the content I want to be creating. How can I keep elevating this? And so it's not just this program. It is a full project that you are really committed to. Anyways, really Megan, cool. I'll let you keep going. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's a great way to talk about it because it's not just an online course. Like, yes, we knew as video professionals that we wanted to have some evergreen educational pieces to it that people could come back to again and again because we've benefited from that style. But we also really wanted to have a coaching component because we wanted to be open to hear from a business, a non-video business owner perspective what were their concerns? What were their questions? Like, what did they need in order to get this done? Right. And we really focused on this being something for business owners who are going from zero to one, right. That the biggest leap in creating video content for your business, especially DIY is that very first video because it, it's scary, you know, showing up on video is scary and no matter how much you do it, there's, there's always going to be that little twinge, right? When you see the little blinky red light, it's always going to be there. And so addressing that from the get-go and giving them their first win so that then they can go and experiment for themselves. And I think that's been the really beautiful thing about it to date that it continues to grow and evolve. And, you know, we're being educated by our students as to what's working for them, what's not working for them, um, what else they could use and how they want to level up beyond what we've already provided. Um, so, you know, the, the spark notes version, it's a course and coaching program, but it's really so much more than that. And honestly, the heartbeat of it is that Paige and I saw people who wanted to create video and didn't know how, and we wanted to fill that need. And so this was really, 
what we decided to do in 2020 to give back. So you have people in these cohorts from, they're not videographers, they're not video business owners. They're all different walks of life, different careers. Like what, what's the, the range of people here? Are they all entrepreneurs or is it the whole spectrum? It's like a pretty wide spectrum. I would say it is predominantly entrepreneurs. Um, and I would even say in that predominantly solopreneurs. Um, but we have the variety of industry is like one of our favorite parts because we have these cohorts of people who are doing all different things coming together and brainstorming different ideas. And, you know, we've had coaches say, it's amazing to be in this group where it's not all coach speak. Like they forget that the coach speak is a thing the same way that like, we'll forget that, you know, video jargon is jargon. Like, and you'll say something and realize that not everyone knows what a lower third is. And so they're like, it's really good to kind of have that reminder and realize, oh, that's something I can educate my audience on. And so we've had people, you know, from life coaches to realtors to we've had salespeople at big corporations. We have an IRS hostage negotiator. Um, Literally, that is her job title. Um, She's a CPA. (laughs) But like she specializes in getting people out of tax trouble with the IRS. And like, it is so broad the, the students that we've had in the course. And I just think that some, there's people who, you know, work at big companies and take it back to their jobs. There's, you know, marketers in-house at places that want to add to their skill set, And so the variety has been, has been amazing. Yeah. That's huge. That's so cool to hear that it's, it's, uh, like a rising tide of people that are understanding that this is important nowadays. So, um, that's great. I think you guys have done something that is, super necessary and it's um it's like a specific part of this video umbrella going into you know honestly i say 2021 but this point forward that you know needs to be addressed um because we get it because we're video people and we kind of are a little i guess more inclined to get over it ourselves but it's um there's something to be said about being able to empower other people to do that um so what, uh, what have been the biggest like results or wins or things that you've noticed your cohorts and your students accomplishing after going through all this and getting indoctrinated with what video can be? We have so many good stories, um, but I want to bring up one that Paige actually may not know about yet. Um, And that's one of our students who's a real estate agent has been essentially since day one of her taking the cohort, um, creating these Instagram videos, right? Talking about making real estate jargon understandable, especially for first time home buyers, because there's so much confusion around it. It's very intimidating. And so she's been regularly putting out, creating and putting out this content for herself, completely on her own. And we've been super impressed by it. Well, here recently, um, and this is a first for our community because she lives local to me. Um, I have noticed another real estate, a competitor, um, a real estate agent in the area who is not one of our students, who has now started creating his own video content to compete with her because he saw her doing something that no one else was doing here and said, I have to get on that. And to me, like, I know people could look at that and be like, oh, that's competition. Like, no, she did it first. And to be honest, she does it better because she does it more authentically and it feels more like her. And I think that's, that's the even bigger win in this, right? Is that she can create content, not only regularly, but that comes across as a friend, as an honest friend who just wants to help you. And I think when you're creating content, speaking to your potential customers, especially as like a real estate agent, that is so important that people feel like they can trust you. So that, that is a new one. I don't know if you heard that one, Paige. I did not hear that one. So that's really exciting. She's definitely one of our our big success stories. I think some of my favorite graduates of the program, if you will, although you never graduate and it's not a program. I made a big stink about that earlier. Um, (laughs) So our our best students um, or some of my favorite students are the ones that really had 
an adverse reaction to being on camera. The people that kind of come in and they're like, I hate my face. I hate my voice. I hate being on camera. Like girl, same. Um, and so I love people that come in that way and they've decided to make this commitment anyways and realize that they just like need to push themselves because that just gives so much validation to if people like that can do it, people who are so afraid of being on camera and people who just like don't want their face to be out there, which I was that person. Uh, you know, Megan and I always tell our students at the very beginning, like Megan's the extrovert, I'm the introvert. I tell them I hate being on camera. I hate it less now, but I hated it when I started. And it's like, when I can see that and see that evolution and realize that they're totally comfortable with it, they're totally confident with it and they love it. Like, I don't know. It's just like, you've not only made a shift in the way that they're marketing themselves, but you've made a shift in the way that they show up for their business. Yeah. That's yeah. like so cool because it's not one of the like measurables, you know, there's not a metric that you assign to that, but it's something that you can see. And, um, I just imagine that's going to feel like really, really good for you guys. Um, just having that ripple effect, you know, um, because when we're doing video projects, not the video identity project, <laughs> we're doing <laughs> regular video projects. We're kind of going into a business and making something for them. And it's kind of just like a standard transaction, but what you're doing is it, it is, it's pulsing outward. Um, and that's really cool. I think that's really important. And yeah one thing that I want to, to kind of touch on here is like the types of videos that they're making. I normally would refer to those types of things as value videos because it's, and I'm sure there's more to it, um, than just giving value. But in 2021, one of my goals is to veer away from the phrase give value because it has become so watered down. And so just, marketing speak, coach speak. Um, what I want to ask you guys is what does that actually look like to you? What does giving value, like what does that take on? What does that contextually mean um, in like in a real world situation? I mean, in like full transparency, I think it means giving a shit and like showing people that you give a shit. Like, I think that, I like that. It's, it's not, it's not just, I want to sell. It's not just like, you know, if, especially if you, you know, your main place that you're sharing these things is on social. So it's not just like, I want to sell to my followers. It's also that like, I want to give value. And I totally agree with you. Like so overdone. Um, but I still say it all the time. It's, um, it, it, people get it. It means something to them. So it's just easy to throw in there. Right. <laughs> no, for sure. But it is, it's like, show them that you care. Um, you know, have conversations with people where you're willing to give stuff away for free because those are the people that are going to come back. It's like the more you pour into people, the more they'll pour back into you. And so, yeah, I mean, for me, I think it just shows that like, you're not just in this for the cash, like you actually give a shit. Um, I think that's a pretty good definition. I mean, <laughs> I like when you're talking about that style of video, I mean, our, our students do way more than just those kind of videos, right? Where you're educating, you're giving, giving value, right? Um, <laughs> like but, we all hate it now. <laughs> I do. I do kind of hate it now. But, um, but I think in general, it's the idea that someone comes away with your video and even if they never become a customer, they have benefited in some way, right? Um and I think that's really hard because it's hard to turn off that sales part in your mind. And, and we actually got this pushback a lot when we started VIP from other video people of, aren't you cannibalizing your own market? Aren't you like teaching the people that you could be selling video, how to make their own video? And it's hilarious how how the giving value that we've done has been so beneficial, right? And not necessarily in that, you know, we've gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars out of this, right? But in the fact that like, there's not a single one of those students who would come back and say, oh yeah, I would never hire Paige or Megan because they taught me everything I need to know. Like, no, they know enough to know when it's appropriate to do it themselves and when it's appropriate to hire out. And I think it's the same way when they're educating their audiences, right? That there's a level to which you want to empower your audience to do it themselves. 
And then a level at which, okay, once they have that, and once they determine that time and money balanced, okay, yeah, it makes more sense to outsource this. Who are they going to trust with that? And, and I think people are far too afraid of giving away too much. Yeah. I mean, I wholeheartedly agree. And I think there's, it, it, it's like this for any industry, you know, we get the like, Oh, you're giving away too much with video or whatever. Like, do you hire a photographer every time you need to take a photo? And, and absolutely not. Like you have a phone and people do that all the time is take out their phone and take photos and post it for their brand. So like, what is this, this thing that's holding you back of doing that with video? Is it just about, like, it's not good enough or that it's not fancy enough? Cause like that's a bunch of BS. Yeah. That's, that's such a good way to put it is like, you can really by educating people, making them understand what it is that you do and, and giving them value. Um, it's, it's really making it's, it's a win-win because they're seeing how they can do it themselves. And there's probably elements of it that they'll do because like you said, Paige, nobody hires a photographer every single time they need a photograph taken. Um, but they're going to realize that there is a, like a cutoff for their level of skill. You know, if a dentist is putting out a video on how to take care of your teeth or how to brush, right. That's one thing. But if they put out a video on like, here's how to, uh, fix, fix a, a cavity, nobody's going to in their right mind, sit there at home with a mirror and just be like, all right, time to go for it. You know, they're going to go to the dentist that showed that they understand how to do it compared to looping it back here. The person who doesn't have a video about that at all, you know, it's, there's yeah. that level of trust. Yeah, absolutely. I just had this visual of someone like hiring <laughs> someone to brush their teeth and I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, you know, if they tell you how to take care of your teeth, like, you're not going to go out and hire someone to do that for you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, so I've never had my teeth brushed by somebody else, but they do like the weird floss thing where they like, I don't know, maybe that's just my dentist. No, I mean, like when you get, you get a cleaning. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. It's bizarre. There's some not like, oh, it's in my, there. Weekly, my weekly <laughs> flossing that I got to go for. I'll, I'll see you guys. <laughs> right. You, you floss your own teeth all year long until you have the big project that you need to invest in, i.e. your six month cleaning. <laughs> Exactly. I'm glad that we, we all got it. A perfect analogy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to have to start bringing that one up in meetings. <laughs> oh man. I love it. I love it. Um, so Megan, I want to touch back on something that you brought up about testing a relationship before you dive into, into it with someone, because I'm sure that so is it, are you both you guys offering these types of like signature authority, um, projects now or Paige, are you kind of diving into different stuff with your, with your clients? I would say that it's, it's more Megan's jam than it is mine. I've done, I've done some of it and intend to do more of it, but Megan has definitely done more of it than I have. So you can okay. direct these questions at her. <laughs> cool. cool. So, so Megan, you're doing these, these video series, probably shooting for like longer term relationships with these clients. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. So there's, there is a concern that are these people going to be right? You know, and that's something that you can't necessarily, I guess, screen just before doing any work with them. So how important is that first project for you and just getting that, um, establishing that things are a right fit? Yeah. Well, I think it's crucial because not only am I testing, like, are they a good fit for me, but am I a good fit for them? Because I'll be honest, especially the more creative you go, the more intimate of a project you, you go into, you really have to have the right personalities to mesh, to make it work. Right. And that's okay. Like I'm okay with saying I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Right. I'm certainly not. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't intend to be, you know, like I think the best projects are ones where you can both get on the same page. You're both excited about it. There's transparency and it's a good relationship, right? That's my goal. I, I only want clients like that. So in terms of that first project, you know, I'll, I'll take on a lot more, um, in a first project than I would down the road. I I'll take on folks that, you know, I don't necessarily know as well or, or have screened necessarily as deeply because 
I view that first project as, you know, you're going to get something powerful out of it, right? Um, I generally have a type of asset that I recommend first, which is a video business card because it is so foundational. Um, And the beautiful thing is that you get to know the business and you get to know the people through doing that project. And for better or worse, at the end of that project, they're going to have something powerful that's going to serve as a foundation for whatever video assets they create with whoever after that point, right? Um, But it also gives us a chance to kind of see like, is this actually something they need, right? I mean, I'm convinced that honestly, any and every business needs to be putting out regular video content, right? The style of that will vary wildly, Um, whether it's scripted or unscripted will vary. Um, but I think the question is, are they ready for it? Right. Um, and there's no shame if they're not, I've certainly worked with a lot of businesses where, you know, they don't have the investment right at the time. Um, I know that's a big one. They monetarily or like time. Yes. For both. (laughs) Um, you know, I mean, it, it depends, right? How big is the business? Do they have other pressing needs? I know, um, there's one nonprofit I work with extensively and their most pressing need year to year is new testimonial content, right? Now that can reveal itself in the way of a signature series, right? In that, um, vein, but, their head is going to be testimonials, testimonials, testimonials. And there's no sense in trying to force a style of project that isn't going to serve a client, right? So it's not only, that first project is not only getting to know each other as as people, as businesses, um, but getting to know more deeply, what do they need next? Is this what they need next? You know, if they need an ad campaign or something, well, maybe that's something we can talk about, or maybe that's something you might want to find someone else to do. Um, Maybe you need DIY content. I have a business that I've worked with for a video business card, who's also a student um, in VIP. And that's really what they needed um, because they need at this stage to create their own content. That's their budget. That's the time they have. And that's what's feasible for them. So it's really that litmus test, you know, for what, what comes next. Yeah. That's that end point that you made <clears throat> kind of answered the the next question that I was going to bring up about when is a good time? When can you prescribe DIY to someone? Uh, what are the, you know, what are the conditions? Where do they need to be or where are they at in their commitment level to using video that you would recommend doing it yourself? And this, I guess, kind of opens back up because this is, we're all in this, the same ball game here now, right? Yeah, I think, I think the time to do it yourself is when you have the time to do it yourself. Um, and That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's a time and money, a balance, right? If you can't afford to hire someone to do it and you have the time, and that doesn't mean you have 10 hours a week. You know, we teach our students, you shouldn't spend more than like two maximum three hours a week on your video content. Like this is not your full-time job. You should not be spending your time on this. Um, you know, if you have a little bit of time to fit it in there, then go for it. If you are slammed and booked and busy, don't do it. It's not, you should be doing what you're best at, what you're an expert at. I mean, that's also like, we're constantly telling our students this, especially when it comes to editing. It's like, we want to teach you to be able to trim, cut out your flubs, throw in some music, maybe a title or two, and then call it a day because otherwise you'll be sitting there ripping your hair out for hours trying to figure out how to edit. I mean, you know, we're all seasoned editors. We've all edited forever. And you still know that feeling of like, oh my God, and it's like something's broken or it's buggy or like whatever it is. And so having someone where like their primary, you know, source of income is selling houses, like go out and sell a house, you know? Um, So I think the time for DIY content is if you have the time for it or if you can make the time for it. Um, And it doesn't have to be a lot of time, but in the same vein, that's not saying like, if you only feel like you have time, you should be doing it. Um, 
because you should be doing it all the time. It's just like, how much time do you have? I said the word time like 80,000 times. (laughs) (laughs) You really need to drive the point home. I I get it. I get it. Do you have time? (laughs) (laughs) Is there a situation or a circumstance where it's flipped and someone might not have time or as much time, but they do have the money that you would still say DIY is more important because a lot of people, we kind of take on that, um, that mentality of, okay, if you can afford it, pay someone to make videos, because why would you try and learn it yourself? Um, and you just brought up an interesting kind of flip to that. Is there something that kind of breaks both those rules though, where you would still recommend DIY, maybe for whatever factor, the authenticity, um, and they can, they can afford it both ways. Yeah, I would say yes. Um, but here's the caveat. You should not be the one doing it, right? So it's DIY, but it's not DIY, right? It's not to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a situation where you have somebody, I, I think about this a lot for behind the scenes stuff, right? You have somebody who's able to, you know, essentially kind of like a social media manager, right? to just go around and do it for you, right? Because the implication to me, if you have the money for it, you should not have the time, right? You should be spending your time on higher ticket, you know, tasks, right? But you should still have DIY style content because it is so authentic, right? Especially if you're in a market where, you know, you need to be on TikTok, you need to be on Instagram. Like you don't need a videographer to follow you around all the time. You just need you know, some intern or, you know, some staffer to come behind you and make this content and you can still direct them in this way. And I would say they should be taking this project, right? They should be taking this on to where they understand what pieces are going to do what for them, because, and, and this is something that gets lost. I think a lot of times in online courses, but we've intentionally focused this project on the end result, the implementation, right? Not just how do you make various videos, but why are you making that video right now? And I think that's really important regardless, I think at times of your time, money balance, right? It's just a question of who's the person taking the time to do it. Yeah, I would wholeheartedly agree because I think there is still a place where there's content that is better if it's DIY. It's better if it's messy, quote unquote. Like it's better if you're doing this, you know, holding up your phone, doing it selfie style, like, because that feels real and raw. That makes me feel like I'm in the room with you. Um, a little bit closer, a little bit more intimate. So depending on your style of business, especially like, you know, I've, I follow a lot of like life coaches, right. I keep using that example, but it's like, if you're a life coach and you're coaching people on relationships, like you should be selfie styling in your Instagram stories about your own relationship struggles. Like that's a weird thing to have like produced and polished and beautiful when you're telling like your own past experiences, like that should be intimate. I should feel like I'm sitting on the couch with you. So there's definitely a time and place for it. And if that's all you have the time for is to record it and put it on your Instagram story, like save it as a highlight. Now it's an evergreen piece of content. Like it doesn't have to be a ton of time that you're putting into it. It needs, you need to be able to take just like a few minutes out of your day. If that's what needs to happen for your strategy. Right. So it's, it's almost like video accessibility as is at an all time high across the board. Everyone's got a 4k phone in their pocket nowadays or 4k camera rather via their phone. So it, it's almost like your goal is making video strategy more accessible because there's definitely a, a dissonance between everyone can use a phone and not everyone knowing how to use their phone camera to make what they need to. So what you're saying here is there's times and places where you should know, okay, maybe if, even if you have the means to make something really good looking and really well done, really polished, you might not want to use that. You know, I feel like that kind of is, is another one of those things that we kind of need to get over. Like you said earlier, the 32nd commercial spot, people are now thinking, Oh, once you get more successful and you can afford it, you should hire people for video. But it's like, no, not every single time, you know, what, what other, can you think of another example where like that really applies for both ends? One video that you should definitely do DIY style 
and another video for the same type of business that should absolutely be really polished. I mean, I can dive in with the absolutely be really polished. And that's like, probably almost anything that's going to live on the homepage of your website. Like when someone comes immediately to your page, you should have something that looks professional. It shouldn't be DIY because that is going to build your credibility as being, you know, like we said before, you see the stock image and you're like, are they real? Is this a scam? Like you want people to see like, this is a real business, not just like, you know, Sally and her garage. Um, and so I think that's when you really need to make that investment because that's your first impression on someone. Um, Megan, I'll, I'll lob the, the other one over to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a great example. Um, for sure. For sure. I think the one that you should always, always, always do DIY is video emails, um, and other content that's going to be so short lived like that, like stories, right? Um, these are pieces that honestly, if I got a video email from a business and it looked like they shot it in a studio, I would wonder if they were psychotic. Like if you're addressing me specifically, like, yeah, like it's a personalized video email. We're not like saying don't put professional. Hello, Megan. No, <laughs> <laughs> like, hello, Megan. How are you today? Like, that's creepy, man. You know, I, I actually think that's it's a more powerful. Yeah. It's more powerful to have it you know, just shot on your webcam saying, Hey, I had a second. I wanted to take this second and make a personal video for you. And it's clear that like you're in their home, they're there with you. It's a personal thing. Absolutely should always be DIY. You should not spend a single cent on that. It's, it's great because that shows like, Hey, I thought about you as a, as a person to send this message to just enough that like it's endearing that you thought of me, but not so much that it's like, I planned a whole day for this shoot to send this message to you. <laughs> yes. 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 It's, like, it's like getting a cute little text from someone who has a crush on you versus them sending you a car. It's like, here, I bought you this car. Hi, my name is Steve. Like, no, man, too much, too much. <laughs> no, no, when you're coming on too strong with the video is I think the, the big yes. lesson here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, is there any anything else about DIY video that I didn't bring up that you feel you'd be you'd be remiss if you didn't mention it? You want people to know it. I think something that that Megan touched upon um that I'm just going to reiterate is that it's not necessarily like if you are in our course and coaching program, it is not necessarily all about like how to make the prettiest video. And I think that that's, that's really important. We're not teaching you to become videographers. We're teaching you to think strategically and to think about what that content actually should be. And I think that's where there's a disconnect a lot of the times where people are like, I know I should be start doing video, but it's just not going to look right. We teach that. Yes. Like we teach you best practices, but it's really about what your content is. So even if you don't take a course from us or learn a single thing on your own, like what matters is what the content actually is. Um, you know, content is king, another cliche for you. Give value, content is king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would 100% agree. And the other thing I would say is that I think a lot of people hear a conversation like this and say like, well, that's great, but I'm not a spokesperson, right? Mm. That's great, but I'm not a technological native, right? I'm not a millennial, I'm not, you know, whatever, fill in your excuse in the blank here. And what I really want for people to know is that anyone can make video. It is not an impossible thing to learn. In fact, it's incredibly easy. You just don't know what you don't know, you know? And, and that's why we made this course the way that we did, the way that's the reason why we're so insistent on coaching to go with this, you know, when we can do these cohorts is, because we want to walk with you hand hand holding you right through this process because we know that it's scary and we want you to know that nobody is too far gone where you can't learn to do this or you shouldn't learn you should you should yeah i couldn't have put it better myself that's um clearly you guys are the right people to be tackling a project like this for all the reasons that you just said so love it if uh I'm going to tag all the, the video identity project stuff when this goes up too. So if you're listening to this or watching this and this all resonated, absolutely go check that out. 
if, if you guys are still running cohorts, right? We are. So our next cohort will not be until, have we announced yet? We can do it in this. We can do it in this. Um, <laughs> our next coaching cohort will be in May because I'm taking a maternity leave. <laughs> That's and we good wanted enough reason. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to both be present because we do, you know, balance each other so well. Um, we could not do this alone for sure. We complete each other. Um, so, but yes, our next coaching cohort will be in May. However, the content's available anytime. So we've been encouraging folks, like if you don't want to wait until May to get started with video, which you absolutely should not wait, um, you can get it now. And in fact, we have given away, you know, some freebies. There's one available right now um, that folks can snag with absolutely zero commitment or, you know, anything like that. We, we really wanted to give people ideas for if you want to create video, DIY video, and you're like, I have no idea what to say. We've got you. We've got 21 prompts for you. Um, and it's a great place to start, you know, just to dip your toes in the water start working with stories because that's the best place to practice. Honestly. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Like, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Paige, Megan, I appreciate the hell out of you guys for hopping on and taking time out of your Monday night. It's Monday, right? Yeah. I think, yes. I think it's still Monday. Love that I can't keep track of that anymore. <laughs> Appreciate thank you, guys you for having us. The time, yeah. Yeah, thank absolutely. you so much. So there it is. I hope you were listening to what Megan and Paige were saying because they were dropping gold left and right. If you're a public facing business and you aren't using video right now to put yourself in front of people, you're falling behind the curve. If the thought of that overwhelms you or freaks you out, the good news is that there's tons of information and resources online. And there's people like Megan and Paige who are helping people exactly like you uh, start and just get going. So go check out the Video Identity Project. I'm going to leave some links in the description here because even if you don't need it or feel that you need it, I guarantee you that there's someone, a business owner in your network, that would massively benefit from having access to this. If you stuck around this long, make sure to give us a thumbs up, leave a comment with the part that stuck out to you the most. If you're on YouTube, Give us a subscribe, and if you're listening on an audio platform, hit us with a follow and give us a review of how you like the show. If you want more from Megan and Paige, go check out episode one, which has the beginning snippet of this full interview. I'm going to make sure that that pops up as a card that you can click right around here, or also find the link in the description of this video. Go connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm David Lasowski over there, and follow me on Instagram at Entrepreneur Broth. Hope you guys like this one. I got some awesome ones coming up. So stay tuned, and in the meantime, drink lots of water, be nice to people, and keep on winning with video. Mm-hmm.